Let's go ahead and look at fluids. Now the blender has a motor controller board consisting of capacitors, controller chip, heat sink, transformer, and other electrical components. Due to the shape of the blender's base, the feet would need to be inset, causing stability issues. Now I used SolidWorks Motion to kind of understand the tipping forces. And with those feet being inset because it has to look like a cube, it just was going to have some problems. So we switched to an injection motor rubber mat. And that was designed to kind of elevate the pitcher and give it some stability with those tipping concerns. However, most blenders are open on the bottom so that air can move in and out through the bottom of the blender. This is going to block any vents that we will potentially have there. So what we're looking at doing is adding vents to the sides of the blender to kind of understand is the controller board going to exceed the chip's maximum temperature that maximum temperature is 85 degrees C, and we need to make sure that we stay within that. Now, we're going to be doing an electronics cooling analysis using CFD as fluid dynamics engineer, and we really have three areas that we can add uh, vents. So on both sides, we can add vents to the lower section. We can add vents to the upper section of the blender on both sides. This is actually what marketing likes the most. And as an engineer, I kind of feel that we need both the top and the bottom and we're going to try to prove that out. Now, we're looking at this as though it's steady state. So it's continually running. Uh, so imagine, you know, my my 11-year-old just holding that button down for 20 minutes for no reason. We want to make sure that we're going to be under that 85 degrees C with respect to this. So I actually used 3D Experience to do this. Now, I imported the model uh, from SolidWorks directly uh, into 3D Experience. I'm just opening up the SolidWorks model here. And the reason I'm showing this is I'm actually pretty pleased with how it came in. It This is probably one of the best looking models I've seen come in through 3D Experience. We can see our report for that import and we can actually see all the colors came over with the board uh, assembly here as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, once the model is imported, I can initialize the simulation. So I'm going to start Fluid uh, Dynamics Engineer, and I'm going to start by adding a name to my simulation. I'm creating the fluid model, and I'm also specifying that it is steady state in that step. Now, once that's been imported, I can go through and just make sure all of the bodies that are contributing to the simulation are included. And here I'm basically saying, um, that these are all the parts in the analysis. I'm going to pick my region. I'm going to specify where that is. It is going to be an internal analysis. And then I can actually select my openings. Now, we're, I'm showing you the setup on the lower vents only, but we'll look at the results for all three. And here I'm basically specifying my openings. So we can populate automatically the edges of the openings and specify that that is a boundary condition face. Basically, you can see that with the blue disk. Uh, behind the scenes there. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side for the vents. So one of the things that we could have done is run a cut through horizontally all of these and pick this all up in one foul swoop, but I thought that it would be important to have the uh, discrete openings on this model. So we now have that all set up. The next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to define some of the section properties. So we're going to specify in the model that this domain is going to be air. So we're going to specify that here in the model with those fluid properties. I'm also specifying where we have a fan at the bottom of the motor to cool this board, that that is going to be air in and around that area as well. From there, we're going to define our solid section property. So I have uh, some custom materials in here that are specified as the chip, the heat sink, which is actually going to be in aluminum. We also have the PC board, the capacitors. We're going to add all of those mechanical properties in there along with the materials to the model. Now, once we have those, we can set up uh, the study, and then we can mesh the model as well. So we're going to go ahead and do a mesh review first. So we're going to look at adding some mesh control into the model. Now, there's two meshes. 
uh, because we're doing heat conduction in solids with this. We're going to add mesh control to the fluid domains. We want to make sure we have good representation of the fluid in and around these solids. And then we're actually going to mesh the solids themselves as well. So here I'm setting up all the mesh controls for the fluid domain. And we can see that model here. And we're actually going to look at a section through the solid mesh, which is a solid geometry as well as the fluid domain as well. So if I move this, we can see what that fluid domain mesh looks like. And then the solid mesh as well. From there, we're going to set up the boundary conditions of the study. Here is my pressure outlets. So we're just specifying that that is ambient conditions. I'm going to go ahead and go in and add additional boundary conditions here. I'm going to specify, let me hide this, and we're going to add an internal fan. So I have a rough fan curve for what that blade would be producing at the 1200 RPM that it would be spinning. And I'm going to specify my inlet and outlet face for that. I'm also going to add in my volumetric heat sources. So I'm going to add a certain amount of heat power for the large capacitors, the small capacitors. I'm also going to do that for the chip, the transformer, and all the other electrical conditions in the model. So I'm also adding in a solid interface because the chip, the transform, and so forth to the PC board have a certain resistance due to thermal paste or thermal glue. We can add that into the model. All right. So we are set up to run. I'm actually going to run this on the cloud. Now I'm not going to use any credits. I'm going to use the default included number of cores. And with Fluid Dynamics Engineer, that is 16 cores of cloud computing. And these are the results from that. So looking at the model with just the bottom vents, what we can see here is a velocity plot. And we can see the velocity leaving those bottom vents. So we're drawing some of the cooler air from up top, but we really don't have an inlet there. And we actually see that there's a difference in the amount of velocity coming out of each one of those vent openings. And that's because of the shadowing from different components. Certain components are blocking the air from leaving certain vents. Now we can also look at temperature. This was the main concern that we had. And in here, I'm going to move this. We're doing a cut through of the chip and we can see that it's 93.2 degrees celsius we're exceeding our temperature the lower vents are not going to work we're also kind of seeing the flow trajectories and the bulk of the air is mainly at the bottom of this study kind of holding in that heat we're not we're not cooling that chip enough now let's go ahead and look at the upper vents so this is the upper vents only again we're looking at velocity we can kind of do a plot section on this kind of get a feel for what that velocity looks like in through the fan. We're kind of dead ending the fluid. You can see a high velocity up against the wall and it's kind of recirculating, but we're not getting any movement there. So um, not quite what we wanted. Now, if we look at the temperature for this, it's probably going to be better because we're drawing cool air in from the top. We're blowing it down over top of the chip. We see we're at 88.6, so we're still not exceeding uh, or below the 85 degrees. And we can see a lot more air movement from the top and the bottom with those vents. Now it's still not quite good enough. Let's look at the full set of vents, the upper and the lower set of vents here. So we're gonna switch to that study. We can see we've got a lot of velocity coming in at the top, a lot of velocity going out at the bottom. We're getting a good airflow in this design. We can see that pretty clearly with what that uh, velocity plot looks like. Let's go ahead and move the cross section here and switch to our temperature result. And what we're going to see with this is we're at 84 degrees. So it's steady state, no matter how long my kid holds that button down to run this blender, right? We're at 84 degrees. So we're beating or we're exceeding uh, that requirement by one degree Celsius. Now, could it be better? Yes, we probably might want to add some vents in the back of the design maybe look at reversing the fan right draw the air in from the bottom and push it out through the top one thing to note we are not including the heat generated by the electric motor itself 
So the, a couple things that we need to refine with this model, but we're getting there. We're looking pretty good as far as the outputs. So to review the lower vents, we're at 93.2 degrees C. The upper vents were at 88.6, and the combination of both is at 84. We probably need to do a little bit better, but we're looking pretty good in our development of cooling these electronics.